correct usage and care for a compound microscope. These are the type of microscopes that you'll be using in class. Before you go through this PowerPoint, make sure you have watched the other one identifying the various parts of the microscope so that when we're referencing them here in this slideshow, you understand what parts of the microscope we are talking about. When you're transporting the microscope, make sure you always use two hands when you are moving it and carrying the microscope. One hand belongs on the arm. The other hand is supporting the base of the microscope. The hand that is supporting the base is palm up with the base resting on that palm. That is going to support a majority of the weight of the microscope. Make sure you are paying attention to where you are walking. Somebody might have left something out in the classroom and you do not want to trip over it. As far as using the microscope, make sure initially that you clear off the lab table. The only thing that you should have out is the microscope itself, whatever you're using to record the information from, from your observations, and then whatever specimens and slides that you are going to be looking at. At no time should you ever force the knobs. If you encounter any resistance, immediately reverse the direction that you were spinning with the knob. If the knob feels like there is some resistance there as well, at that point make sure you get a teacher. Never do you ever touch the stage and force that or the objectives. Use the correct knobs or nose piece when you are needing to rotate through the objectives or when you are trying to attempt to focus or zoom in. Make sure once you are done using the microscope and the slides that you clean up after using the microscope. Operating the microscope, to start, you will plug the microscope in. Then you will flip on the power switch. The power switch is usually located on the base. Make sure the objective is set to the least powerful setting. If it is not, then go ahead and rotate the nose piece until it is on the shortest objective. At that point, you can either turn the stage clamps to the side and place the slide on the stage, or you can slide the slide underneath the stage clamps. If you turn them to the side, go ahead and slide them back over the slide to hold the slide in place before moving on. When you are trying to locate the specimen, once the slide is placed on the stage, look through the eyepiece with your dominant eye. Most of you are right eye dominant. If you're not sure, try each eye and see which one feels most comfortable for you. If you are unable to find the specimen, you will move the slide back and forth, forwards, backwards, left, and right, until you can view the specimen through the eyepiece. Once you see or believe you see what the specimen is, you can then make sure you place the stage clamps on the slide if you have not already done so. Go ahead and turn the course adjustment knob to bring the specimen into focus. If necessary, readjust the slide to locate the specimen. Once the specimen is in focus, turn the revolving nose piece to adjust the strength of the objective to the next highest. Again, carefully turn the course adjustment knob to bring the specimen again into focus. Do this very slowly and frequently check to ensure your objective does not touch the specimen. What that means is you will have to remove your eye from looking through the eyepiece and physically look at the side of the objective and where your slide is to make sure they are not touching. If necessary, turn the revolving nose piece to adjust the strength of the objective to the next highest level. If you ever do this, it will be instructed by the teacher. If it is not necessary to use the next highest level, you are now finally able to bring the specimen to focus using the fine adjustment knob. Carefully turn the fine adjustment knob to bring the specimen into focus. Do this very slowly and again even more frequently than before. Check to ensure your objective does not touch the specimen. If it is necessary to use the highest setting objective, carefully turn the revolving nose piece to adjust the strength of the objective to the next highest level. Make sure that the objective does not come in contact with the specimen. Then, following the second bullet above, being very careful, in which 
you will carefully turn the fine adjustment knob to bring the specimen again into focus. Do this slowly and yet more frequently check to ensure your objective is not touching the specimen. If you are working with partners, your partner can help you verify to make sure that your fine adjustment knob right, is moving in the correct direction and to make sure that your objective is not coming in contact with the specimen or the slide. Once you have completed viewing what was necessary and your use of the microscope is over, use the revolving nose piece to change the strength of the objective to the weakest setting. Turn it back to the shortest objective. Carefully remove the slide by sliding away from the arm. Using the course adjustment knob, lower the stage all the way down. Notice I said course adjustment. You are not going to touch the fine adjustment knob when you are ending. Make sure you power off the switch, then unplug the microscope. When you are storing the microscope, make sure you store them covered when possible and pla uh, gently place them and remove them from the shelves. Make sure you put the microscope back where you found it, facing the correct way, which is the same way that you should have found it. Make sure your entire lab table is cleared off and all supplies are put back in the correct spot. 